Johnny Dollar. How are you, Ralph? Well, at the moment, not too happy. One of our clients, a pretty important one, is a man named Bertram Haskell. He owns a small copper mine up near Houghton, Michigan. Where's that? Up in the Keweenaw Peninsula, where it sticks out in the middle of Lake Superior. So what's happened to Bertram Haskell? Nothing. It's one of his colleagues, a man by the name of Oliver, Ben Oliver. Well, what's happened to him? Ben Oliver's been murdered. I see. Haskell demands that you be sent up there to find out who did it. Why? What's the matter with the police? I don't know. All I know is that he wants you up there now, right away. Well, as long as you're going to pay the freight. Of course. Because we don't dare take a chance of losing Haskell's considerable insurance business. In other words, Johnny, it's because of Haskell rather than the small policy on Ben Oliver. Oh, he was insured too? 15000 straight life. Who, uh, who's the beneficiary? His wife, but that's beside the point. Is it? The point is to satisfy Bertram Haskell and thereby keep his account. Okay, Ralph, I'll see what I can do for you. Uh, Johnny. Yeah? That's, uh rough country up there. So? The same thing may apply to some of the people you'll run into. Especially the killer, huh? Yeah, so uh, be careful, Johnny. Sure. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Deller. And listen, since Fritos corn chips are fresh as spring itself, well, it seemed appropriate to give you a springtime gift. So Fritos have attached a free package of flower seeds on their large bags as their salute to spring. Now, there's nothing for you to mail in. Just buy a large bag of Fritos. And there, right on the bag, is your free package of flower seeds. They're the finest seeds you could get anywhere. Genuine burpee seeds. And there are three varieties. Beautiful zinnias, snapdragons, or petunias. Get yours while they last. Free flower seeds on the large bags of Fritos corn chips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos corn chips. It's not polite to smack your lips. But you can't help it with Fritos corn chips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos corn chips. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Insurance Company, Chicago office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the deep down matter. Expense account item 16185 for a plane to Chicago, then a flight to Houghton, Michigan, far up on the Keweno Peninsula. It was mid afternoon when I climbed off the plane and spent item two, 50 bucks, deposit on a rental car. I got a highway map and directions to the Haskell Mine, then headed north on Route 41. Along the way, I passed all sorts and sizes of workings, including the famous Quincy Mine. It's supposed to have the largest hoist in the world. At the little town of Phoenix, I turned south and east on the side road that obviously was used for a lot of heavy trucking, and I finally arrived at the camp. I guess you'd call it that, surrounding the Haskell Mine. There were seven or eight weather-beaten frame houses, a large barracks-like building, one fairly nice-looking brick home, a service building, tool shed, and garages. Bang in the middle of everything was a big hole in the ground. Above it, a hoist, looking somewhat like a heavy wooden oil derrick with a big wheel on top of it. A group of men stood around wearing shock helmets. As for finding the office, well, all I really had to do was follow the sound of what happened to be Mr. Haskell's you, booming voice. Have having any respect for the dead? You try moving Mrs. Oliver out of that house of hers, and I'll break your neck. But don't you want to stand up? Don't you realize that Ben Oliver had more to do with the success of this mine than anybody else, than even I had? Well, sure, I know. Well, uh, get on over there and apologize to her. You need some new quarters, and some of those new men get hold of some carpenters and build them. Now, go on. Get over there and apologize to her. Well, who are you? What do you want? Mr. Haskell? That's right. Well? My name is Dollar. Dollar? Johnny Dollar? That's right. Well, why didn't you say so? I'm glad you got here, Dollar. You've got to clear this thing up. See the justice is done. Now, come in, come in. Come into the office so I can tell you what's happened around here. Yeah, sure. Believe me, I won't sleep. I won't rest until whoever... Uh, well, sit down. Sit down. Thanks. Dollar? 
Ben Oliver and I have been working over this country together for years. Ben's brains and my money. Ben picked the spot for this mine. So I understand. Dollar, I've made and I'm still making a fortune out of it, in spite of the fact it's a small operation. And ben Oliver? Yeah, ben. I tried for years to make him my partner so that he could fully share in this thing. But he wouldn't have it. Pure scientist, Ben was. No real interest in money. So the best I could do was promise him a fat royalty for the rest of his life. But I never dreamed his life would come to an end so soon. What happened, Mr. Haskell? He was murdered down on the third sub-level of the mine in a stope we discontinued working for a while because of some exploration he was doing in it. And you've no idea who or why, Mr. Haskell? If I or the police could find any possible reason for Ben's being killed... You might be able to pin it on one of them, the man who did it. You say... But as it is, we haven't even reason to lock up those men who could have done it. You say the man. Well, under the circumstances, it had to be one of the miners. One of the six who were on their way down the shaft in one of the ore cars. And yet... Well? I said under the circumstances. But under the circumstances, not one of those six could have done it without the knowledge of the others. Well, now, how do you mean that? A single, carefully aimed shot, Dollar, from some distance away, 15, 20 feet. Yeah? Struck him in the back, went directly into his heart. Just one shot that must have been carefully aimed. But... Well, go on. That shot was made in utter, in complete darkness. Oh, now, now, wait a minute. I know, I know, ask. I know. Impossible. Utterly impossible. But that's the way it happened. Cigarette should. Winston gives you real flavor, full, rich tobacco flavor. Winston's easy drawing, too. The flavor comes right through to you. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. A modern filter? Sure, Winston has it. But that's only the beginning of a Winston. Up front, up where it really counts, Winston packs exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston, America's best-selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Deep Down Matter. Here, Dollar, on the wall, a, dam a diagram of the mine. You uh, better explain that in one-syllable words, Mr. Haskell. I'm afraid I don't know very much about a copper mine. Well, here's the main shaft where it goes down into the ground at a slight angle. Yeah. It goes down along one side for the most part, one side of the main ore body. That's under that big hoist I saw. Outside. That's right, yes. The hoist, by means of a continuously running cable, works the ore cars up and down. Like uh, buckets on a conveyor belt. Only they're detachable from the cable in order to fill them at the various levels, then bring them up and dump them at the surface. Now, just exactly where was Ben Oliver killed? 321 feet below the surface, on the third sub-level, in what you might call a big room or cave down there. And remember, Dollar, Ben was shot in the dark. No lights down there? Ordinarily, yes. Plenty of them all over. You better tell me exactly what happened, Mr. Haskell. Oh, better still. I'll take you down there, let you see things for yourself. And you'll see why it was quite impossible. Yeah, we'll see. The last shift has just come out of the mine, so we'll have it to ourselves. Whatever you say. You'll say you'd uh, better wear one of these shock helmets and uh, these gloves. Okay. And uh, keep your top coat on. You'll find it cold down there. Right. Finding that ore car down into the bowels of the earth was something I won't very soon forget. It jerked and shook and shuddered its way down the narrow tracks. The noise was deafening, and there was something eerie, something frightening about it as we plunged on down. Picture yourself aboard a slow-moving, noisy roller coaster going almost straight down into utter blackness, and you'll have some idea of what I mean. 
blackness, that is, except for the various levels we passed. All of them were strung with glaring electric lights, and I could see great caves. I believe you call them stopes, where the miners had cut away the ore. Here we are, Dollar, the third sub-level. There it is, Dollar, the stope where Ben was killed. This big uh, cavern in front of us? Yeah. He was apparently chipping away some samples of rock there at the side of the back of this shaft. Well, now, wait. You said it was dark in here when it happened. But there's enough light in here now. Ben was checking some of this ore for uranium. Uranium? In this country? We've uh, kept it a secret. That is the possibility of it. I see. Well, go on. Well, he sent a message up to me asking me to get his scintillator, a Geiger counter, and so on. I picked them up at his home and brought them down here for the men, the six men I mentioned. And? As we reached this level, I was, as I was about to disengage the car from the cable, the lights here suddenly went out. So I stopped the car in its noisy fashion, and then, after a minute or so, one of the men struck a match. Dollar, do you see this light switch? We found somebody pulled it. One of the men aboard the York car. It had to be. Anyhow, I turned it on. We had light again. And there at the side... You know, 20 feet away from us, lay the body of Ben Allen. Did you hear the shot? Above the noise of stopping the car? What's more, well, Did anyone see the muzzle flash? No, no. You see, the weapon was a powerful air gun, a pistol of foreign make. We later found it at the bottom of the shaft. Fingerprints? No, no. The men were all wearing heavy leather gloves. Well, did any of them actually see Oliver here before the lights were cut off? I saw him. And it all happened in the few seconds between the time the lights went out, you stopped the ore car and put them on again. In total darkness, one of those men was able to fire, to fire accurately, the shot that killed him. Ah, no sign of a flashlight, anything like that. No. Then I see what you mean about it being impossible. Nevertheless, it was done, and by one of the men aboard the car. And that's why I sent for you, Dollar, in the hope that you will somehow can bring the killer to justice. Hmm. Well? Well, from here, Mr. Haskell, it looks like you've handed me a pretty large order. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Welcome, recording star Mel Torme. It's terrible trying to sing with a bad cold. So I always take four-way cold tablets to relieve cold miseries fast. Good idea. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-Way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When you catch cold, try my way. Take Four-Way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve cold distress and feel better quickly. Four-Way, only 29 cents. Now a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff's gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. I told Haskell I'd take on the case only if he'd let no one know why I was there at his copper mine. I parked my bags in the guest room of his house, apparently lived alone there. During dinner, he told me more about Ben, about their close relationship, about Oliver's hope of finding enough good uranium ore to make the mining of it practical. However, in spite of his optimism, Dollar, I'm afraid it was all just wishful thinking on Ben's part. Well, certainly worth some further exploration, though, isn't it, Mr. Haskell? I doubt it, but we'll see. The important thing now is to find this killer. Do you feel the police were thorough enough in their investigation, in their questioning of the men aboard that ore car? Those men all swore they loved Ben. There's nobody can prove otherwise. Even I can't prove otherwise, even to myself. You say the air gun was a foreign make. Yes, that any one of them could have got hold of. There's a big foreign population in this area. Yeah, so I understand. But unless the police can find out where it came from, to which of those six men it was sold, well, it's impossible, I'm afraid. And how to explain that shot in the dark that so unerringly found its mark? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of thinking about that. And maybe I've come up with a couple of ideas. Oh? Well, good. I, I hope so. Where are the six men? I told you. Beyond the general suspicion, simply because they were there, the police have had no reason to hold them. 
You'll find them in the bunkhouse, all of them. Then maybe I'd better have a talk with them. Oh, by all means, do. And if you're able to break one of them down... Let's, uh, wait and see. Yeah, I did have a couple of ideas about that impossible murder. I questioned the men without telling them my real status in the case. But more important, I talked to Ben Oliver's wife. A quiet, gentle little woman. All in all, I felt she was taking the whole thing very well. Yes. Bertram Haskell was always very good to Ben in his... his rather domineering way. But why do you ask? Well, it's, uh... It's good to know what kind of a man I'll be working for. If I take the job. Just be sure you look out for yourself. That you get full credit for any discoveries you made. Well, now, that uh, doesn't quite tie in with what you just finished saying about Mr. Haskell, does it? Ben was so unselfish, self-effacing, so easy to take advantage of. Oh, no, I shouldn't talk that way. You, uh, you sound as though you don't quite trust Mr. Oh, Haskell. Oh, I, I didn't mean that at all. I see. I understand your husband thought there might be uranium in this unlikely spot. He was sure of it, Mr. Dollar. He told you so? I typed out his report to Mr. Haskell. Oh? Do you remember what he said in it? Only that he was certain it had great commercial possibilities and that he... Only that he what, Mrs. Oliver? No, it is. It isn't nice the way I'm thinking. The way I was thinking then, so let's not talk about it. Well, uh, look, uh, this uh, job, Mrs. Oliver, do you, do you realize that it might mean a great deal to me? That if there's some reason why I shouldn't take it? Well, isn't it only fair that you tell me? All right. You seem like a nice young man, so I'll tell you this. Yes? In the report... I made Ben say that he felt he should share in the uranium profits, the way he was not able to share in the money from the copper he discovered. I see. Thank you. Your husband had various instruments for detecting uranium, didn't he? Yes, I'll show them to you. Oh, good. They're here in the closet. The things Mr. Haskell was taking down to him the day that he... Yeah, yeah, I see. Geiger counter. And I guess this thing is a scintillator. Yes. And this? Oh, it's some kind of a special light, I think. Black light? Yes, that's what he called it. Sure. And it activates certain... And here are Mm. the shoes he was wearing. A nice warm jacket. Wait a minute. Yes? This black light. This thing is still working... And it is. Look, look, Mrs. Oliver. Why, yes. Isn't that strange, the glow it makes on his... What is it? Oh, Mrs. Oliver, I believe it's the solution to a murder. I borrowed the scintillator, the counter, the lamp, and I put on the jacket he'd worn that day, put it on underneath my topcoat. I went back to Haskell's home and told him I had a theory about how one of the men aboard that ore car could have aimed so accurately in the darkness of the mine, but that I'd like to check it out down underground. He didn't quite understand what it was all about, but he agreed to get down there with me again. Anything he said to help find the killer of his old friend. Pull the light switch, Dollar? Yeah, that's right. Put out the light so uh, everything will be as it was the moment Ben Oliver was shot. Whatever you say, you set down this detective for Sure, sure. Now, uh, off with the lights, huh? Very well. Now, look, I'm, uh, I'm gonna feel my way to the spot where Oliver was working. And it should be right about here. Well? I'm taking off my top coat, Mr. Haskell. Oh? Why? Because under it, I put on the jacket that Ben was wearing when he was killed. I see. Now... In a second or two, I'll turn around so the back of this jacket will be facing you. So that you can see it. See it? How? You'll see the spot in the middle of the back that was dusted with some radioactive material. By you. What are you talking about? Yeah. So that you can see it with the help of that black light. And I'm sure you have it in your hand by now. 
Have you turned it on, Haskell? Yes, it's on. And I'm sure you can see the target on the back of this coat. The same as you could see it in the dark the day Ben Oliver was killed. Catch it! Catch you, Haskell! Yes. A perfect target for you. That's right. Our... All through... What? No! Surely you don't think I stayed in that coat over there? No, listen. Listen. Maybe there was uranium down here, huh? You knew there was. And you know the only way you could keep all of the profits from it was by getting rid of Ben Oliver. All right. All right, but listen, Dollar. Oh, listen. drop dead. And maybe you will, Haskell, if you try anything funny on the way back up to the surface. No. You see, this gun of mine is still loaded. An almost perfect crime. And he was so sure of it, he'd called me in to back up his story of loyalty to Ben Oliver so that no one would ever question his taking over the uranium Ben had found. Expense account total, including transportation back home, $131.50. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Constipation can be a problem for anyone even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolated X-Lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. X-Lax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity, gently, overnight. Now here is our star to tell you about next week's program. Next week, Denver, Colorado, and a string of supermarket robberies. And what a racket. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, John Stevenson, and Will Wright. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. Coming next, another tale calculated to keep you in suspense on the CBS Radio Network. Let's take a walk around the block. A wonderful idea. An old-fashioned walk, arm in arm with your sweetie. But first, you buy the right car to pick up your best gal. You drive her in style to the right spot for your stroll. Art Need of Armory Garage says... Drive right to Armory Garage. Armory, the home of tested used cars and 101-time payment plans, has the lowest prices ever right now. Their Armory special low winter prices, and Art Need tells you why. Frankly, we'd like to sell you a tested used car right now, before the big spring rush. Pick from the largest stock in Armory's history. Drive it now. Enjoy it now with no down payment to pay. You don't start paying till May and take up to 36 months. Well, no wonder everybody says if you can't deal with Armory, you just can't deal. Don't make a date for your old-fashioned walk till you make a date with Armory Garage for a tested used car. Central and Colvin Avenue, Albany. WROW, Albany, New York. <laughs>